Hello, YouTube, and welcome to the In Your Head podcast. I'm your host, Jesse, and with me on the couch for a special episode, which is going to be aired right before the taping of his special, Brian Isley. Brian, how are you? Hey, sir? how you doing tonight? Thank you for joining Thank me. Thank you man. for having well. me. Yeah, it's appreciate no it. Absolute pleasure is mine, actually. So, oh, uh, man, I appreciate that, man. Uh, well, it's I love so watching your comedy every Wednesday. I'm really hoping to get out to the show and, and see your see your album. Oh, so, man. Wow. I, I'm, I'm, I definitely want to get, see it recorded. So, uh, I mean, your comedy's been great to watch. I've been coming to High Note for, I guess, a little over a year at this point. Right. And it's it's been great watching... You know, watching every step along the way, watching how it's been. So thank it's been, you, man. It, it's it's been great. So I can't wait to see, you know, a full album and watch it. Watch a full recording. Here. Right. So getting get having you limited to five minutes is kind of a crime. But yeah, yeah, I'm not. I'm still getting used to that. Like <laughs> just doing five now because I've been, you know, doing shows here and there, and yeah. the the sets are extended, fifteen, thirty. Yeah, you know, normal forty five cases. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um. So before we start with the interview proper, though, uh, I got to ask you, mm -hmm. what did you bring for the statute of initiation? What story did you bring for us that was uh, marginally illegal that uh, you might not be so proud of? Well, about? I try to I try I try to buy uh, alcohol underage. OK. And we got caught. Oh. Um, it was uh, it was in Penns Grove, New Jersey. I'll never forget it. Uh, it was 2000 summer of 2001, which is really stupid on my part because I was turning 21 two months later. So I could have <laughs> waited. But I was like, nah, I, I need a drink. <laughs> so my my friends and I, um, one of my best friends, uh, he passed away. Uh, we we decided to go to Pen the the liquor store in Pens Grove, New Jersey. So we we go there because we heard they they serve uh, underage. They don't yeah. check. They don't card. So we went there, and um, we went there a couple times before that, and we got away with it. So we went there this time figure you know we're gonna get our belvedere and we be on our way <laughs> so we get there and uh the regular dude is at the counter he kind of knows us we kind of know him so it's boom bam we're out of there but there's another dude behind him mm -hmm. he's never been there before and i'm like yo something's up and my man was like yo it, he works here too don't worry about it b it's all good <laughs> so we get the belvedere and everything we get up to the counter the guy immediately turns around and puts his badge on the counter. Oh, shit. <laughs> and then he asks for ID. I walked the hell out. <laughs> I walked right out. He was like, nah, where are you going? You get some ID too. You need some ID too because you try to purchase. I was like, I ain't trying to purchase anything, but I, I did. So I gave him my ID and um, we, got, uh, we got cited. We had to go to court and everything. But here's what I didn't know. I didn't know that it was an entire operation to uh, to stop and prevent underage drinking. Okay. So when they took our names, our names were in the paper the next oh, day. Oh, like a full sting, like when you see yeah, a full sting, sting. Okay. a full sting. Yeah. So I, I didn't tell my pop, I didn't tell my dad. I just figured it would blow over. It was in Penns Grove. Nobody knows. I'll go to the court and pay the fine, and I'll be done with it. My dad burst through my door the next day like, you mind explaining why you're in the paper? You're an embarrassment to the name. So I'm like, oh, my God. So everybody in the town like, yeah, Brian got busted. He tried to get, he tried to get booze and he's underage. So I just felt like a criminal for, for from the whole the whole town was just looking at me. It was just crazy. And Salem, Salem's a very small town, around 8,000, 10,000 people. So everyone knows everyone's business. So everyone knew mine. Yeah. And I was pretty uh, much a, a clean cut kid. I didn't get in any trouble or anything. That was the first time I ever got in trouble. Mm. So it was pretty uh -huh. rough. That's a hell of a way to start, too. Right. A lot, right. A lot of the stories I've gotten, whether they got caught or not, um, you know, a lot of the stories were like little things that, you know, some, and it was like, oh, you know what? But that was, that's the first yeah. one. It was like starting out. Yeah. Starting out big. <laughs> so uh, now, nowadays, I'm, I'm in papers and stuff, but it's for good stuff. Yeah, good stuff. Mostly the comedy. And stuff <laughs> yeah, like mostly that. the comedy. Yeah. It, it almost sounds to me like that was just, it sounds like almost they were playing the long con. You know, that place kind of knew that they had an in with a cop and they were just like, we're going to let it go for a little while. And then on a busy weekend, people are going to come in and we're just mm -hmm. going to 
You know what I mean? And then we're just going to roll in, and that's... It, it almost sounded like that, the way you were explaining it. Like, yeah, these guys were cool, and you know the guy. So, yeah. it's kinda, you know, it's kind of like having a dealer. You're like, you know the guy, and it's like, okay, this is the guy. But if his friend's there, you're, you know... So it's, it's. I was shook from the start. I was like, "Let's get out of here." <laughs> but you know, when you're around stupid friends, you become stupid yourself. So. And just two months. That's it. That's yeah, just two it months. It's so dumb. I think about that now. I'm like, man, myself today. I would smack that kid because <laughs> he was stupid. He did some dumb stuff. Uh, you know, I'm glad a lot of the stories that people have told on here, they were kids. You know, it was people young and doing dumb shit. It hasn't been like, oh, man, last week. When I- <laughs> oh, oh, don't get it twisted. They, We still do dumb stuff. <laughs> but it's not as egregious as it was back then. Right. No, no. I. <laughs> it's minor stuff now. I hear you. But some of the stories are, uh, some of the stories that people were bringing from back in the day was like, ooh, man, that's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait till Jeff. Jeff's episode, Jeff Colella, his episode's going to air in just a couple days from this taping. Right. Monday. Um, and his is going to air, and his story is something. Oh, so you okay. have to take a listen to his, and it's it's pretty good. So. All right, I will. It, I it, like Jeff. Jeff's a good comic, so, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to laugh listening to his story. So he's going to be on on uh, this coming Monday. So um, okay. and you're going to be airing this coming Thursday, right before your recording, which is going to be two shows on Saturday January twenty oh seventh. Twenty seventh. Yes. I'm terrible. It's I'm a, it's all good. <laughs> so explain it for everybody out there where it's going to be, where they can get tickets, all that. Oh, uh, they can. It, it's um my first uh live album recording. I'm recording my debut comedy album. Uh, can I say the the title of it? Can I? Yeah. Oh no, uh, we got no problem with that. Okay. Right all right. The, this the, is the, definitely not a clean podcast. The title. <laughs> <laughs> good. That's good. The title. Uh, now I can drop this facade that I've been giving. Oh you hell yeah! You, if you were watching any of the episodes, <laughs> that facade usually goes in about five minutes. So we got uh, plenty of time. So the album is called "Fuck It," and um, it's going to be recorded live at the Drake in uh, Center City, Philadelphia on January 27th. That's a Saturday. We have two shows, 6 p.m. and 9 p.m., and you can purchase tickets at isley.brownpapertickets.com. Awesome. I'm definitely going to put a link below, um, definitely to that uh, and to you and any other pages that we're going to need. Cool, so we'll man. Get to that. So I'll have everything below in the video to make sure that you guys get out and pack this place. So we got to make sure these shows are good. So. Yeah. And they are. Believe me, I've watched him, and he's... <laughs> <laughs> he, I'm, I'm already thinking some of his jokes that are rolling through my head while I'm sitting here, <laughs> and I, they get me every time. I mean, I've seen some of the jokes. I know that's what, that's what we were talking about before we went live, and seeing what, you know, like you said, even seeing you work some of the jokes and knowing I've seen those jokes before, they still get me. Right. Because you find a way to just make them better. You hone them down, and you have that edge that really... It, it, you you make the jokes pop. Thank you. So thank you very much. And it is great. And and I wonder how. So how long have you been? I, I don't want to say professionally doing stand up, but like even like when was the first time you kind of walked into a mic first time I like, ever stepped on a stage to tell jokes uh, was four years ago on February 9th. Oh man, you got it to the day. Yeah. What? Why the? Why is the day so memorable? Uh, because I remember I told myself to stop procrastinating and just go do it Nice. because I wanted to do it, uh, four years prior to that. Oh. <laughs> so I was just, I had a bunch of stuff that was written down cause I was already writing poetry. I was already writing short stories and, and stuff like that. So I wanted to try comedy too, but I just procrastinated because, you know, people around me were saying, nah, I don't do that. No, nah, I don't do that. And then I was like, man, fuck you. <laughs> like, who who are you? So I went up and, and I did it. And um, the first time that I get it, I did it, man. No bullshit. I got a standing ovation. Nice. At the uh, Northeast Comedy Cabaret. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've actually been there. Yeah. And that was so, like, that That just, all right, okay. I can do it. Yeah. Now, now I'm really going to do it. And uh, I've just been nonstop ever since. Nice. I've always wondered, watching somebody you know start. We I we we've, we've been to the open mics. You've been to high note, and you see people start their first or second time. And I wonder what what makes it harder to make you want to continue. Uh, I mean, so there's I, I assume there's pretty much three ways the set would go. You would do great. Mm-hmm. 
you have maybe a tepid time up there and a couple of chuckles or it's just you just eat shit and people are just staring at you. Yeah. And I almost wonder what's the hardest way to continue because when you go out and it's great that just makes it go oh man yeah then you then you're so full of confidence and mm-hmm. that first time maybe a couple times down the road that you eat it yeah then it's like oh man and then it's a little more deflating as opposed to I'm going to get this out of the way now and it's really rough and okay you know you know I'm you're starting comic and you don't do well okay mm-hmm. I'm going to get better or you have a tepid time where you're like, mm, it's okay, you do all right, but then you're like, can I make it better? Maybe it's just, and that, I, I always wonder what might be harder for, for people. I, I've seen so many first I don't, times. I don't know. I'm glad I don't have to find out. <laughs> I'm glad my first time was good. <laughs> I don't know what I would have done if I sucked the first time. Which is rare, especially from what I hear. Yeah. That, that is really the the exception to the rule because most people say when you're gonna go up there the first time it ain't it ain't gonna be great so don't well, don't be surprised but it's i don't know that feeling well it's that's a damn good thing man <laughs> that's a fantastic thing not to not to brag or no anything. it's hell man it's a way to go i mean i remember my first night and I, I went up once once and only once and i mean wasn't great i mean everybody's gonna slam their first night probably like they're they're gonna knock their own night down whether it yeah was, you know if, if it was okay it's like it wasn't you know, I wasn't horribly uncomfortable. I didn't freeze up. I wasn't like panic mode. I tried to stay comfortable up there. And, right. And it was, and I'm like, okay, but it was like tepid. And I was like, oh, all right, I got some laughs. And I guess it was almost a little harder at that point for me to really want to keep mm-hmm. doing it. And um, I mean, I guess if I eat shit, it would have just been like, I expected it. I the <laughs> reason I think the reason why it worked because I started off with a joke that I knew would work. It had everything in it that that makes a joke work it was my um it was a potty training joke okay and i told him i was like you a lot of parents are they they don't know the exact moment when to start potty training they they're they're frustrated they're confused by it and i said listen i have the solution when you go and change a kid's diaper and you take that diaper off and it looks like you're the one that took a shit in there (laughs) it's time to start potty training (laughs) See, though, that's exactly, and that's fantastic. And I knew that joke would work. Right. So if if anything else, if everything else failed, I knew that joke was going to work. So I started off with that first, and then everything else was smooth sailing from there. Nice. That's that's a good way to go, man. And it's, it's, it's nice seeing, you know, like, yeah, you wrote the joke. Now, I, I'm assuming after, even after that first time, you worked – that joke a little bit more. Yeah, I expanded upon it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I've definitely seen that a lot of the material you do is definitely, you know, organized, well, oriented around, you know, your kids and family life mm-hmm. and what you see with, with that. So I've noticed that's a lot of your inspiration. <laughs> no one can live that life but me. No one else can duplicate that. You know, it's it's going to be original. Yeah, nobody's going to be able to say anything about your kids. Right, so. no one. And this set my wife, and she doesn't want to do stand up, so it's all me. Does she come to watch you much? Or? Yeah, she comes to the big shows. Okay, right, yeah. she comes to the shows where I get significant amount of money. Those oh, are the uh, shows well, that, that she goes to. I can't say that that's really. Uh, she'll be at that. She'll be at the album recording. And she was at uh, my two um, film shows that I did in 2016: uh, Dead Wrong, okay, and um, I Hate Earth. We did those. We filmed both of those shows at the uh, at the Hideaway in Atlantic City. Okay. Uh, that run was hugely successful. It sold out uh, two yeah. shows in less than a week. Wow. And the club called us back to do an encore show the week later. Nice. So that was a pretty big week. Yeah, I would say so. That's a hell of a week. Yeah, yeah. That was that was awesome. I got to start getting out to some more you know, smaller comedy events. Like I've seen, you know, like I follow a couple big guys. I'm a Brewer fan. I'm a Kyle Kinane fan. Um, you know, so like if they come to town, it's cool. You know, I'm like, yeah. oh, maybe let me try to get some tickets and stuff yeah. like that. I, I really think I do need to start seeing some more of the the local smaller scene and mm-hmm. picking up on some of the names of some of the guys that are out there doing shows. You and, should because some of them are awesome. Yeah, I, I know. And it's, but it's been, I guess a little hit or miss. Like sometimes I work. Like I've gone to, I believe it was 
the Northeast Cabaret. I believe that was where a show was I went to, I think. Again, my memory is terrible. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> um, but I believe that's where I went, and they were like, oh, here's the headliner, and I just kind of was like, mm. you know, so. I, I, I get just, that. Yeah, comedy is hit or yeah, miss. Yeah, exactly. And it's so, it, it's, it, like I said, if I, like I know Kyle Kinane, I know his style, and I know if he's going to be somewhere, I'm going to enjoy it. Like yeah. he, he came to the TLA last year. Mm -hmm. you know, like, I got tickets. And boom, it was like an, a whole hour of laughing. It, it, it's a little harder to, which I guess is tougher without word of mouth for you guys, which which is great with Facebook. I can't imagine years ago how it was. But to huh. get the word around and say, hey, come out to the show, check it out. And like, oh, I know this guy. I'll go check it out. Because yeah. you get a lot more of that presence. But not knowing these comics and not seeing them is harder for me to just go, yeah, I'll, I'll take a drive down to AC and drop $40 to, right, to see right, something that – right. You know, I, I I guess that's a little harder for up and coming. It, it is. It's definitely a little harder. Um, a lot of people are have that mindset. Well, you're not you're not established yet. So yeah, I'll hold off on that because I don't know. I don't know if that's quality or not. Yeah, I don't have a name yet. So I I get that part of it. But some of the best comedy of I I've seen is uh some live comedy from unknown relatively unknown comedians mm. uh one of my favorites my favorites ever and that's established legendary mm. is zach zachary uh pickard okay. from atlantic city he's tearing atlantic city up <laughs> right now okay doing shows daily he's at atlantic city comedy club he's at i believe he's at caesars i believe he's at uh uh, a few other uh show a few other uh uh venues in Atlantic City. Atlantic City is his right now. Wow. Okay. He is he is killing it. He, and we've done shows together. We done a show we did a show called the Zach and Isley show where we roasted each other for 15 <laughs> minutes and then we did 30 minute sets apiece. He's been on a couple of my self produced shows and we just hit it off and he's the complete opposite of me <laughs> he's 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 a tall lanky white dude uh very animated very physical and you know me i'm very stoic i get yeah. on and i tell jokes just the way i'm talking right now yeah and um it was just a perfect mix for that show yeah. because he hit them boom, 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 boom. And I just came up and just knocked them dead with just cerebral, wow. sl slow, <laughs> methodic comedy yeah. storytelling. And it was just such a dope show. And um, that's one of my favorites. Another one of my favorites is uh, Chanel Ali. Okay. Uh, she's from the Philly area, but she's in New York now and she's killing it up there headlining at Caroline's and things oh, wow. like that. So uh, a lot of up-and-coming comics are are really doing it right now. And um, I'll watch them before I spend $200 to go see somebody else. Because, number one, I'm supporting them. Right. And, number two, I know they're good. Yeah. So I'm going to laugh when I go to their shows. Right. So, like, watching guys like you coming up, at, and, and, again, today's world i could see how it's a little bit easier but like you yeah makes it so much nicer for because i've seen when you've been talking about the album you've had some uh I, I believe you've had some people also sharing they've shared some videos mm -hmm. you know of of some of your act and it's like oh wow well, you know now i can go i, I really like this guy so mm -hmm. i mean i've you know i mean like you describe zachary pickard and you say okay that would be great, and I'd love to, to see it. Now I'd like to see a video, and I think that that's a great way for people to start. I shared one of his videos this morning. Okay. You should check it out. I, I, I will, actually. I'm going to check it out. I've been. Uh, that's one thing about me. Today, yeah. um, if I rock with you, I'm going to support you. you. No matter what. We, we, we go, we succeed together, and we go down together. That's fair. It's the only way to do it. You shouldn't just leave your friends in the dust. Yeah, yeah, and I've been blessed to make friends while doing comedy i never thought i'd be making friends in my 30s like who does that <laughs> who the hell wants to make friends in their 30s that's what happened to me wandering in there <laughs> right i mean right you know i just kind of wandered into high note you know knowing noah and i stuck around it was yeah kind of like a thing like hey i do this thing i was working at a con with them at one point okay and 
you know, he was like, oh, yeah, I do this thing. Come over and hang out. And I, so I started showing up. And I, they can't get rid of me now, I guess. No, 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 so, no. Well, you are you are the DJ. Yeah, me and my goofy octopus hat. So. <laughs> now, that is a staple. That is a high note humor staple now. Uh, it's it, You know, it's well, I, I guess I've never even said my DJ name. I'm DJ Octopussy at high note. But people, <laughs> not a lot of people Well, now know everyone knows. I, I hope they know it because most people don't call me by it anymore. So some of the guys still like to call oh, me man, by it. Oh, man, I'm going to use that next time oh, I'm, I'm on stage. Please do. Uh, I did not know that. Yeah, a lot of the guys try to thank me, and they're like, oh, yeah, thanks, you know for jesse being over there i'm like nah man they gave me the dj name that's why i got this dumb hat so <laughs> i don't you know wear a goofy octopus hat just to be called jesse just <laughs> right 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 <laughs> so, yeah i'm gonna use that now but um i mean high notes been been great as far as like a bouncing off point for a lot of guys that i've seen do work um, absolutely and was it what was High note, one of the first mics you started coming to, or yeah, it was the second one right after uh comedy cabaret. Okay, because uh, I I didn't know I didn't even know there were mics in South Jersey. That's why I was going to cabaret in the first place, yeah. and I found out about high high note. I started going there instead because it's closer. I had to pay toll and all that stuff. So yeah, um, and those guys, the guys that I originally uh interacted with neil and and those guys they were they were pretty cool yeah so uh stuck around and eventually won the stand-up comedy championships in 2015 yeah I, exactly i was gonna bring that up actually in the old guard i know they were cool and but i know you still let them have it a little bit about not getting your belt i i so. did i i i let people have it <laughs> When when they when when I need to let people have it, I I let them have it. Yeah. <laughs> which which isn't right. I mean, but we got the new belt for this year, and and you got it before there's even a winner. That so was the old you know guard, that's man. they're adjustable. Called Belts being adjustable. professional. <laughs> um, <laughs> in in Neil's defense and the old guard, uh, I will say that they did give me money. Okay. They gave me some money. Right. So I would rather have the money than the belt, but I would rather have both since I won the damn thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> you said I was going to get money and a belt, so give me both. But if I had to choose, yeah, give me the money. I need it, the money. Yeah, it's definitely a cool trophy to have. To Yeah. Know, it's. I mean, I know nothing replaces it. You know, here, you know, you won and all that. But yeah. Having, having the belt is kind of something that's like, yeah, it's that neat yeah. little... That was that was so cool because um there's a vi- there was a video circling around about uh, me um winning. Oh, okay. And uh Neil making the announcement and uh my mom, my aunts were there, a bunch of my friends were there, and there's a couple people that in that video, some of them I'm no longer friends with and some of them have passed away. Mm. So when I look at that I'm like, Wow, man. It, it's amazing what can happen in three short years. Yeah, it's a lot does change. Man. Yeah, a lot changes. No, a lot changes. So I look at that and um, I got to fight back tears sometimes. But it, it's it's a bittersweet moment because that's when I knew I was pretty damn good at this. Yeah. I mean, that's only you were only in it for what, I guess? A year. My time right about a year. It yeah, was a so. year. Wow. And then you you came in and and now you're hosting it and seeing a lot of comics who've been at it for, you know, two three years and you're getting to you, you hosted the first week of it yeah um so you got to see a lot of these guys that were some were up and coming some were um some have been at it for quite maybe, some time yeah, yeah. um it, it didn't seem like there was anybody who'd been there doing comedy for like ten years no so I, I, I guess don't know. I guess there's got to be a um I, I guess you either plateau plateau there you go or you know like i, I guess if you kind of just get good good and then it gets stale if, mm-hmm. if you're at it for 10 years and it's still here that that can't be good it's and not come, good yeah you because know, you got to just keep you just got to keep that steady climb and you know what it tells me it tells me that they're not writing daily yeah because if you write daily no matter if it's shit or if it's good you're honing your skills and you're getting better and you're finding some way to slip past that plateau yeah. and, and continue to ascend. You write 
every single day. They like Brian. They they people actually ask me, Brian, how do you have so much material? <laughs> oh, I I pray for it. <laughs> no man, I write the material, man. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? Uh, some people ask me the dumbest stuff, man. It's just it's just crazy. I, I it's sometimes I think I have some like engraved message on my face like ask me the dumbest question you could possibly <laughs> ask me uh, yeah especially in something like that because it really yeah you gotta write now do you write just for stand up because I know when I read the comedy bible which I, I don't know if I mentioned on air or off air but um, I have the comedy bible book and you know it mentions writing and and like you said it, it mentions repetition writing and doing mm-hmm. that stuff but about one chapter later, it says, well, now you need to write a script, and you need to write this. And I'm like, mm, I'm not writing this. script. You know what? I don't think I need to read the comedy Bible, because I do all that stuff. Okay, so, so you do write <laughs> scripts and things outside yeah, of just I, the stand-up. I've been writing since I was six years old. Okay. So I've kept a journal of my life since I was six. I gotta so there's a lot of stuff in there. If that becomes an autobiography, it's I'm a lot of source material. <laughs> Actually, I have a five book deal with a uh, CD, uh, BBC Publishing. Okay. And um, the first book that's coming out later on this year, I'm trying to like have it come out the same time as the album, uh, but we'll see about that. The first book that's coming out is called The Ugly Pretty Boy, and it's a book of poetry. Nice. Book of poetry and short stories. So yeah, I've been writing my whole life. Wow, yeah. And I have screenplays and I have uh short stories and I have uh novels and stuff like that. So hmm. uh, along with the jokes. Yeah, okay. Cuz I I I see it's like they they push comedian. I guess they they like push you a little bit like when you're a comedian. And I've heard it on shows and places like that where right. they say, "Oh, you're a comedian. That's great. What where what kind of scripts you got? What kind of screenplays you got?" And it seems like they you know, I guess it was maybe tongue in cheek when the comedian was saying it, but it, it seems like even when they were talking about it in the book, they were like, "Hey, yeah, when are you going to write your your script and screenplay?" I'm like, I kind of wanted to do this so I could just kind of do stand up, and that's Can't. what I, it, it, yeah. Well, I wasn't, I never planned on taking it far, but I figured I, uh, if I hang around this place, they're going to bother me to get on stage more than once in a while, so I'm like, uh, so I got to learn a little man, bit. Yeah, I got a bunch of uh, stuff, notebooks. Filled, <laughs> got a ton of stuff, man. Oh, that's see, that's not a bad way to go, though. At least it, it, you're you're staying. It's an outlet, and a lot of people don't even have that. Mm. I, I know so many people who don't have a creative outlet, and I I think that's kind of hard to do. That is, that's creative in itself. What, not being not, <laughs> not being, doing anything. Yeah. Not not, <laughs> not being creative. How are you not creative? There's as a there you. It's something creative about you. And the fact that someone hasn't figured that out yet, that takes some doing. Yeah. I mean, I've, like, when I dated some people back before I met my wife, it was, I, I knew people who, when I said I was a woodworker, would just look at me like, what, what do you do? Like, they don't understand it. They're like, okay, well, what do you do? What do you like to do? I go to the mall. I go, I'm like, it, I, I know it's horrible. <laughs> but, I, I like, even now, some of my friends, they're like, I don't really you know, I don't really have a, a thing like that. I don't have something I do, and and it's it's a, a little hard to think about. I, I mean, that that you don't have something like my wife. She crochets, um, mm-hmm. and, and like I said, I'm a woodworker. I, I got too many hobbies. I don't even want to think right. about it all. But you know, and it's I, I, guess, I guess people kind of need that. They need that release to to I express know, I, themselves. I know I do. Yeah, is it, is it's a, it's therapeutic. Yeah, it's a a lot of people say it's there. Yeah, Definitely absolutely. That. And it's I <laughs> I had you know I've had times where I've just wanted to go up on stage and just be like I might just go up for three or four minutes and just vent just about vent. something. That's what I yeah. do. That's yeah. that's what I do. It's not. I don't even consider them jokes. They're re- well written complaints. <laughs> that's what they are. <laughs> They're well written complaints and gripes that I have. And. It, which is funny because I, I I was talking to my wife last night about one of your jokes that you do when the kids come home after you ate their snacks. Oh yeah! And wow, that, <laughs> that joke kills me every time I hear it because, like you said, you're not real animated on stage. No, but when you just do the whole hand slap into the side during that joke, and it just 
it just it kills me every time that joke and that it's <laughs> it's like you said it's it's you hear you see what's going on you live it and you make it that much funnier right to see. most people just their kids come home from school and it's no big deal and that's it yeah yeah <laughs> oh man you know what i completely forgot about that joke see that's how much i write yeah i forget jokes and that pisses me off because then i gotta go back and go through notebooks and stuff like that and try to you know but wow thank you thank you no man that's that's one of my favorites because just you know it the way you express that and <laughs> yeah they were pissed <laughs> my youngest one especially she She's something else, man. That's sixty percent of my t- material right there. My youngest, youngest daughter, yeah. And that's the is that the one who's who, like you said, is starting to be a little bit more like you. Yeah, when you say on stage is starting to be I'm more com- into comedy. A complete clown. We took her out to a birth for a birthday. We took her out to go eat, and she was having me literally in tears, laughing the entire dinner. I'm eating my food, and I just feel something like coming towards my my face and it's her face just easing just ever so slightly and slowly and just kept moving <laughs> until her nose was like right here and she <laughs> and she wouldn't move um and it was just so funny just little <laughs> subtle stuff like that i'm like man you are you're an asshole get out of here i'm trying to <laughs> eat my food you said she's what about nine? No, she's six. My oh. oldest one is, will be nine in May, so okay. she's eight, and my youngest is six. Okay. Yeah. Um, my youngest is the leader of the family. She is something else, man. So you know, if something happened to you, you'd have her to take care of everything at that point. <laughs> yeah, I I don't worry about her at all. She's six. I don't worry about her. It's my oldest wow. one that I worry about because my oldest one is so she's so innocent. She's so innocent and scary. Mm. She thinks uh, every, the world is just roses and lollipops and everybody should be getting along and everyone should love each other and hug each other. She was me when I was a kid. And then I transferred from Catholic school to public school and got a rude awakening that these people ain't shit and I can't love all of these people. And unfortunately, my baby is going to have to have that rude awakening one day that can't. I want you to love everybody, but it's just not humanly possible. Yeah, it's it's something I try to do, but I've kind of also come to the realization it's like, it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, and it hardens you, right? I, yeah. I was that guy. I, I see her growing up, and she's just so sweet and just so innocent. She's the nicest person in the world. My youngest one is just like how my little brother was when we were growing up. Mm complete asshole confrontational but funny and super creative but don't mess with him he'll kick your ass and that's my youngest one my oldest one is me it's just watching me and my brother grow up all over again wow. but they're girls <laughs> it's crazy man wow, it's that's, crazy that's that's kind of interesting at that there I, I guess, <laughs> is it like a karmic payback i guess from your parents maybe wishing that on you being like yeah let's see what you my dad <laughs> my dad you he you gave me so much shit growing up you it's the same thing's gonna happen to you but they're gonna be girls he literally said that to wow. me <laughs> and it happened and he called it on you he's called so much stuff <laughs> he's predicted so much shit and it came to fruition now, i don't even call him anymore and say you're right I just be like, no, I ain't, knows. I'm not fucking calling him. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> he knew as soon as he said it, you don't got to call him. Don't even give him the satisfaction. And he just, because when I call him and tell him, he's like, I fucking told you. And just laughs. It's like, you, you, you ain't no help, man. Fuck out of here. You know what? I think I'm hanging up now. <laughs> Thank God for parents, man. Thank God for Oh, parents. my dad is. That's that's the other 40% of my material. Yeah, I've heard some <laughs> of that. That's been that's been some great material. I I it's weird cuz I think I get yours and Troy's dad's material combined because you guys both talk about your dads and it it kills you me. You know what? Cuz we talked about that. We had a conversation and Troy uh told me your dad jokes are the funniest. <laughs> 
And I he 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 loves the joke where I talk about my dad uh trying to intimidate me because I become I became a teenager and he wants to lay down the ground rules again as the dominant man in the house. So I come downstairs to get a drink and he's already downstairs chest naked, lifting weights <laughs> in his chair and just staring at me. <laughs> and they got notes on the on the dumbbells and stuff. Like he he said that's his favorite joke that that's I that one. I do. That is a great joke. Yeah. I I... <laughs> <laughs> I remember we videoed the first time I did that joke. It's on YouTube. It's uh it was it was taped and it's on YouTube. The first time I did that joke. You can hear Troy in the background dying laughing. <laughs> do you have an actual YouTube page with most of your Video. Yeah, uh, I was trying to search for something beforehand, but apparently the name Brian Isley brings up a lot. Yeah, it bring YouTube. up uh, white uh, weightlifters and All and and magicians and CEOs and shit. I'm like, damn. Yeah, I, I apologize. I got a little frustrated. I was just going to wait until, <laughs> I, until you were here and I got a link off here or something. But I was like, I, I don't know what. Nah, I got. I, I'll there, give you the link to the there, videos there some and videos, stuff. Yeah, so right. I, I didn't know if there was a page that you had. Yeah. with most of your videos on it. So well, I, I definitely want to put you can. Shit, you can go to my website. Yeah, Brian, Brian Isley Live dot com. There we go. And all the links to my videos are right there. Okay, cool. That's even better. I mean, I'm cheap. I don't have a website, so I just go through my YouTube. This all is just all my YouTube and my Facebook. So uh, my, I, this is a much nicer way of doing it. My wife set all that stuff up, so yeah, she's nice. a technical person of the family. So she set all that stuff up. She <laughs> got all that stuff going, so. It's it's never easy, believe me. Like it's, yeah. I'm that for, for my office, so it's like when, when they need something done on oh. I've changed more phone batteries. It's 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 even been to the point where I got to change car remote batteries. <laughs> like, oh, my remote's not really working. I was like, all right, time to go to CVS and get a watch battery. So that's that's you know, if it if it makes electricity in one shape or form, that's my job at work. Oh, okay, I, I have to deal with it in some way. Wow. So I don't even know what my title is anymore. But that's, that's <laughs> it's, I'm just I'm an I'm an administrative assistant, I guess. But okay. I I don't know though. I'm. It doesn't encompass the weird crap that I got to do on a regular yeah, basis. I hear so. that. But I think we've all been there with yeah. one job or another. So. <laughs> <sighs> yes. <laughs> yes. I prefer comedy much more. <laughs> I don't I don't blame you. I definitely don't blame you. Maybe someone will share this and I'll start getting into a million subscriber area and I'll be all right. Yeah, so that would be awesome. That would be fantastic. I'm not holding my breath, but it's, <laughs> it's just, this is this is a fun release. And like you never you like, never know, man. No, no, you never I, know. Like we we just start stuff and it's taken off. Like the one project that I do, um NBA panel, I'm not yeah. sure if you uh, know that, but yeah. uh it's a show podcast that we do on Wi-Fi radio called NBA panel the host the creator his name is John Weatherspoon and uh he brought me in and we're only 66 episodes in and we've already had we've already got our media credentials nice. we've already covered the uh Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame uh the big 3 in Philadelphia the team USA in Colorado wow and uh Man, we we just been doing so much, and like that right there, a lot of people don't know the NBA panel is taking off and doing things more so than the actual comedy is. So um, you never know, man. You start a project, it could take off. Yeah, I, I know. I'm not trying to sell myself short. I just no, please you know, don't. No, please I, don't. I, I'm I mean, one of those. I'm one of those friends, man. I, I, I'm going to motivate you whether you like it or not. <laughs> well, I could use that some days. Believe me, I've had the days where. I, I mean, it, it gets tough. I mean, doing something like this. I mean, I I enjoy it. I'm enjoying mm -hmm. it. It's the outlet. It's fun having some of my friends on here, guys like you from High Note and people. Right. And and it's been fun, and that's why I'm enjoying it. Um. So I'm trying not to. <laughs> it's almost scary if it got big. Like I worry that if it got big, then it's oh damn. Now I it's get a that. Thing. Yeah. I get that. And it, like I used to bowl a lot. I was you know I used to. You know, I was I just bowled a little bit, and it was like I, I tried to do a couple of tournaments, and people were like, "Oh, why don't you do this more regular?" And I was like, "Then it's a thing." Yeah. Then it's it's not fun. Yeah. It's it like, become it becomes work. Yeah, I bowl in a league with my buddies, and it was like you know I was like, "Oh, I bowl once a week," and it's like, "Okay, why don't you go out?" Because then it's not fun. I hear that. I'm just here with you guys on a Friday, just killing time out. 
That's it. That's what it is. Yeah. If it's a tournament and I got to travel to New Brunswick one weekend, two weekends from that, I'm heading down to Virginia. Mm-hmm. Then it's, it, I'm like, this isn't fun anymore. I get that. I understand that. And, and I, you know, I, I guess a pod, I mean, NBA panel sounds like it's, I mean, that is like a real, a, a real, that's a real deal. I mean, that's. <laughs> Man, we have, we have, we had real deal guests too. We've had uh, Woody Page, uh, Bob Ryan, two legendary sports writers, Hall of Fame writers, nice. ESPN personalities. We also had uh, Chris Broussard and Nick Wright from Fox Sports 1. We had uh, players like Stefan Mulberry and uh, nice. Rod Strickland. We, the guest list is just crazy. And mm. like I said, we're only 66 episodes in. Right. So it's just wow. it just keeps getting bigger and more popular. So that's not bad. Well, I mean, as of this recording, I think I've got about 14 episodes in. So I'm, I've still got some ways to go to get there. So right, okay right, right, it. right, right. I just found out I got a fan in Norway. Wow. Yeah. The guy, uh, uh, he sent me a message today. Nice. Said I. <laughs> he said, he said I would come to your live album recording, but here's the thing: I live in Norway. Mm. I was like, yeah, you're not gonna make it. <laughs> but but thank you, I appreciate that. I almost feel bad, like somebody should Facetime the poor guy. Well, uh, <laughs> so he can I, see it. Well, you know, he can get the album. Oh yeah, he can get the album. Yeah. So uh, it's not it's not a total loss. But he felt the need to tell me he couldn't make my album <laughs> recording because he was in Norway. That's, I'm like, that's that's a legitimate excuse, bro. It's yeah, that, all right. That's fair, yeah. Don't tell <laughs> it's me you got fine. laundry to do. No, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Don't you know? I get I get your excuse. Your excuse is fine. Yeah, that's okay. If you got to go across six time zones to get to a to, to get to a CD <laughs> taping, that's okay, man. You're allowed to do that. Maybe wrong. So that opinion. was pretty cool. That made my day today. That's awesome. Man. Yeah, that's, and that's the beauty of the internet because as you get big, you know, it can spread. Anybody can search for something. You know, right. so you get that YouTube rabbit hole, and you know, or or anything, and you start saying, "Oh, what, what's this on the side?" and boom, you know? yeah. And so, like, I don't even. I I worry like what might be beside my videos. I don't even know what kind of videos people might have to click after they see mine. <laughs> But, you know, you, you got the videos that, that come up, and then who knows when somebody can end up, you know, end up on your page and see something of yours. And I, yeah, it's you crazy know, it's how the internet to... has made the world so much smaller. And... Yeah, it really has, because everybody can see anything at any point in time. Yeah. Once something yeah. happens in somewhere, we know about it over here within a minute. Right. You're looking at Twitter, and, you know, a bomb goes off in you know, in New England, in England, but you know, God forbid, please, I'm not saying anything like that. Right, but, right, right. I get what you're saying. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, everybody's going, oh my God, and they tweet, and boom, and now it, But with that, though, like like you just mentioned, with that, it also makes you jaded. It also yeah. makes you, like, uh, ho-hum to everything, because you, you really don't have any emotions toward anything, because you get it so instantly, mm-hmm. and it's just like, okay, all right, damn, that happened. That's unfortunate. Then you go back to whatever you were doing. Yeah. As where you hear from word of mouth, it has more impact on you, or you see it on the news and you're like, "Holy shit!" Yeah. But when you just it just pops mm-hmm. up as an alert on your phone or something like that, it's like, "Oh, oh, damn!" All right, and then you just move on. It's yeah. kind of yeah. make made us a little uh, emotionless. Yeah, you look at the as a people. You look at the Kennedy assassination or man on landing on the moon. That was like. That was the thing that was on every television, right? Everywhere, and that was like, oh my god! And it captivated a, the entire nation and the world. Yeah, yeah people knew where they were when it happened. They knew right. what was going on, and you know, it, it it was like that. Now it's like, oh, I think the, the last got blown up. Mm-hmm. I think the last event that had everybody captivated like that, unfortunately, was nine eleven. Yeah, because you know we didn't have smartphones and things. There was there was no Twitter or social media back then. So that was the last one. You had to get your information from the news, television, newspaper, and stuff like that. Still, yeah, in two thousand one, I remember that one too. Like exactly what happened. I, 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 I was working a, a back shift at the time, so I was home at like midnight, one o'clock. So I slept in. You know, I get home. You know, my mom's calling me. She's like, "Where, where are you?" I'm like, well, "What's the matter? What's wrong?" She's like, "You haven't seen the." T-? I'm like, "No, I just kind of got up. I was calling you to check in, see what's going on." 
turn on the television, and I'm like, and it's like, holy shit! I mean, now you're seeing what's going on. It's like, yeah, you know, this is crazy. Like, this is some horrible shit. I mean, and I was seeing it at the far end of it. I think both towers had already collapsed. Right, right, right. Up. Same, same thing for me. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, it was, it was a crazy feeling because that's what every what everybody was talking about. And mm-hmm. now it's just you get bombarded with media. I think we're we're so. Just every day, it's media everywhere. Hour. Yeah, yeah, and there's too much of it. I think that it is saturated. It's it's, and I think it's saturated with the wrong stuff. I, I, you know, I mean, there used to just be reports on what's going on, but now it's just we don't want to. We want to find the negative and everything, and it's it, now it does jade us a little bit. Now everyone has an opinion with the story. Yeah. Instead of just giving the story and let everyone else form their own opinion about it. Yeah. We got to take your opinion along with mm-hmm. your story. Like, just give us a story and shut the fuck up. That's it. Yeah. It's not like that anymore. It's definitely not like that anymore. No. News has changed. News has become, they're telling you they're political. It becomes political and that's, yeah, I'm not even going down that road. <laughs> please please on, don't. <laughs> no, I don't I don't talk politics on here. I don't Jesus. I, I am not political. I don't deal with it. I no. Mean, I think the only time I talked about politics on here was when Vegas uh, Lancaster did a joke back after the Trump election and he ripped every single person on the cabinet about something that they did that was like against and that's the only time I talk politics. I didn't I know who Vegas. any of them were and oh, he's fantastic. I love Vegas. I was so glad to have him on this podcast and it, when he did that, that was, the, you know, he is. He's a great writer. He, yeah, he knows how to write. And yeah, just like we said earlier, he you you he works it, and he saw every member, and he did research on every single one of them, and it was beautiful. It was like, oh, this was the secretary of education, and she's never worked in a school system, and you know stuff like that. And he just did all this different stuff, and it was, you know. It was, it was, but that's, I think, the only time I think we've talked about politics. Yeah. So I try to avoid that one because we're sitting really close and that's, we don't. You know, <laughs> okay, so it's all good. Sitting a little, no, I'm saying sitting this close to talk about politics. Could no. Be, uh, it could be a problem. Yeah, it people, could be. So. It could be. It definitely could be. I'm trying not to bring that, but so I, I am a bit of a, a gamer. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. a bit of a geek. And okay. You can see the arcade cabinet sitting across the room. Um, so whenever anybody's on here, I ask, uh, I always have to ask, what is your favorite video game of all time? Of all time. Yeah, it can be arcade, can be a console. Um, you know, that arcade game you got to throw quarters into if you ever see it. Or, you know, just, you know, that, that console Can I just game. God give you my favorites in those categories? Either one, yeah. You got a couple, uh, yeah. My favorite arcade game of all time is Superman, the arcade game, when you could play as the red Superman if you okay. were a player too. I, th- I think I remember th- I remember this a little bit. I loved that game. Wow, okay. See, that that one, I, I think I remember seeing a little bit about please, that one, but that wasn't a big one. Please YouTube it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to check that one out. I'm that game, it was a it. side-scrolling game. Okay. And, uh... I don't know why the game developers thought of this, but they said we they, we need this to be a two player game. <laughs> We're going to have two Supermen, and one of them's going to be red. He's going to have a red suit, and it was so cool because you never seen Superman in an, in another suit before. Yeah. So people used to argue at our arcade. It was the Market Street Arcade in Salem, New Jersey, and. People used to, argue, I'm the red Superman. No, I'm the red wow. Superman. And fights used to literally break out over the red Superman. That game was the shit. Okay. That that game right there for arcade. Uh, now, console, The Legend of Zelda. Which the so gold the gold cartridge the, the, the first the first yeah. original Legend of Zelda good yeah that's a great classic yeah that is a, I think that's the greatest game of all time in my humble opinion yeah no it's it's a, that's a great game and it's this see this goes back to a discussion I was having with somebody um the other day and uh, you know the way video games are now compared to then. You had a game and that game especially dropped you in the middle of nowhere and said good luck fucker. And that was it. You didn't have much to go on. You no. didn't know where anything was. You Hell didn't no. know where you had to go. Nothing. And it was just like explore. Or, it was all trial and error. Yeah, or talking to your friends. Yeah. You know, you could talk to your friends, and that's how most video game information was learned back then. 
in arcade especially was because you're like, oh, how did you do this thing in the game and like a Mortal Kombat move or something? Right, like that. right. And games like Legend of Zelda was just all you you had to spend time playing the game. And I wanted to I wanted to know how people were figuring out codes. That I never quite got. Yeah, I, I'm like, who the who the fuck are you? Are you some alien or something? Like, how are you figuring this up, up, down, down shit? Yeah, how did the Konami code get found out by some? It must have been somebody must have said something to somebody. I don't, how would that be found out? That's a total mystery to me. When yeah. when when the when word starts spreading, I'm like, who? Oh, I want to know the original source. Who yeah. found this shit out? Yeah, how, how did you find out that they put this specific code in there? Because, yeah, you could do it, the, the you know, you can go, okay, what's the code that we can put in? Well, let's try up, up, down. Or let's try up, down, up. And then you go all the way to that whole thing. Right. Like, how the hell did you get there? I didn't even know there were codes until <laughs> somebody said, oh, there's a code to get such and such. I'm like, what? <laughs> how did you find that out? And that was it. That's all we had was somebody told you at an arcade or something. Yeah, and that's it. No, I, I remember my friend came. Well, I just got a Sega Genesis and we were playing Sonic the Hedgehog and we would go through the entire game. And one of my friends came over. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm playing Sonic. He was like, you're playing the entire game? I'm like, yeah, what, the, what are you talking about? Yes, I'm trying to beat the game. He was like, here, to the controller, up, down, left, right, ABC, start the fuck? Debug menu. Yep, I remember. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I was like, "Yo, get out my house, man! You some kind of witch or something? Like, <laughs> how do you know this shit?" Oh man, and, and that yeah, that was a that was a fantastic game too, man. That was that's yeah. a hell of a good choice. Nobody's a lot of people that have said favorite games haven't gone that far back into like the Nintendo era, era really. A couple Super Nintendo, but not a lot of Nintendo, and that's a good one. I I love the. I'm a Legends I'm a series. super '80s baby. I was born in '80, so I'm yeah. the entire decade. So I got all that shit. You saw the good stuff, man. I got yeah. the Nintendo. I got <laughs> Mike Tyson in his prime. Oh, I got yeah. <laughs> Reaganomics. All that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's something worth bragging about. But... <laughs> it's not. It's <laughs> definitely not. But I take the good with the bad. That's how you know you were the original '80s kid because you had the Mike Tyson's punch out. Not, not punch out. Punch out. Have Mike Tyson punch out. I can't even remember what. Why did they take his name off of it? I forget what happened. Why did they re-release the game? I have no idea. I can't, I gotta, I, I'm gonna look that up. I'm gonna assume that the, he was getting in trouble and stuff, and they took his name off. Yes, or it, was it was it a licensing issue? Or I don't know. No, I. I don't know. I mean, I I know they just took his name. I think there was something to it, but I can't. And who wants the game after that? That I got it because Mike Tyson is on the game. Yeah, that's why everybody got it. Like, oh, I'm gonna fight Mike Tyson, even though he was beating the shit out of you. And (laughs) (laughs) he would, it was one punch and down. That's it. He would just knock the dog shit out of you. That wasn't even a fair fight. Not at all, man. And now I watch speedrunners do that. You can watch speedrunners and watch them play that game and. Beat Mike Tyson in the first round. It's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 30 (laughs) years later, (laughs) you weren't doing that shit in 87. Believe me. 30 years later, they're still finding out secrets to that game. They just found out something that the programmers put into the game. One little guy in the crowd that does something in one of the fights. And, like, he goes like this or blinks or a camera flashes. And that's when you can knock somebody out or something what they didn't know this until like last year this just came out and so they're just finding out secrets like this that's crazy man yeah it's it's some crazy stuff that they've been finding i out wonder if years. there's still some hidden stuff in like super mario brothers or something like that i mean people have broken those games down so much i mean it would you could hope they're still finding out tricks to beat the game faster you know, there, there's all kinds of stuff that they're finding. to See, that's continue. what makes a game like a classic. Yeah, Yes, these games today have superior graphics and stuff like that, but the, the replay value isn't all that great. Yep. Back then, you could play those games for hours on end. If your parents didn't say, all right, man, damn, shut that shit down, <laughs> you would play it all day long, literally. Yeah. And you'd look up and go, oh, the sun's back out again. And Yeah, and I've, I've been there for that. I've yeah. done some of those nights. I remember playing Space Invaders on my friend's uh, Atari 2600, I believe. Yeah. And we played so much that the game exploded. <laughs> 
That is, that's a new one. No bullshit. True story. We played the game so long that the shit exploded and different strokes came on. <laughs> I remember this shit. We was boom. Now the world don't move to the beat of just one. I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> and smoke coming out the back of the. I was like, "Oh shit, yeah, I'm going home." Exactly. <laughs> Have fun telling your mom your Atari exploded. <laughs> Tell me about that ass whooping you get later. The hell of a thing they program into Atari is that when they break down, it turns into different strokes. That's yeah. <laughs> what what code is this? <laughs> Somebody give me the code to Space Invaders turn it into different strokes. Oh, True story. Oh. That shit was wild. I didn't know an Atari 2600 could do that either. I didn't think. I thought those things were pretty safe because they were really basic. You know, not like today. They're pulling so much power, and there's so much processor. And everything. not if you playing that shit for nine hours straight. <laughs> it's only so much it can take. <laughs> that Atari was hoping somebody would have spilled something on top of it just to cool it down. And uh, flash to steam. That shit was flaming hot. <laughs> and he's, your buddy still got a scorch mark in the middle of his carpet. Where yeah, Atari burned up. Yeah, that shit was wild, man. I'll never, ever forget that. I hopped on my Knight Rider big wheel and went the hell home. <laughs> oh, man, you were making all the 80s come back for me, man. This I'm is... an 80s dude, oh, man. I, I wish we it. never would have left the 80s. I, I hate all this new shit. You know what? I I bring the 80s back. Just leave the clothes. Leave the clothes, the yeah. Clothes. Leave the clothes that Androidin' this shit. <laughs> leave, leave all that dumb shit behind. Give me the music. Give me the TV. Oh. Give me the wrestling. Give me the the sport. Give me all that. Give me the games. All that. I'll take all of that. If I could bring the Scorpions back, that would I would love it. They, they, see, they get mad when I just blast '80s rock all day at at high note. They get mad at me. <laughs> Listen, man. Thriller and Purple Rain dropped in the '80s. Yeah. That's all. You need to know. That's all you need to know. Well, what's so great about the 80s? I just told you what was great about the 80s. Thriller and Purple Rain dropped in the 80s. And that's probably most of album sales in the 80s. Yeah, right facts. There. I think Thriller was probably one of the most selling albums. It's the highest selling it album is, it of is all time. I thought it was one or two, but yeah, it is. that's it. And then he followed that shit up with Bad, which sold th- another 30 million albums. And I get it's wow, man. There was there was a lot of good news. Eighties were great. Let's the eighties. The eighties is the greatest decade of all time, with the exception of you know cracking AIDS. Yeah, <laughs> it's the greatest decade of all time. Period. It's not even close. Now that see now that would be a I think that could be a hell of a podcast. We could just relive the eighties and bring back a chunk of the eighties. Please, for an episode. Please, just, let's do that. I, I'm, I'm in it. That would be great because there's so many great things that came out in the '80s that we took for granted. I mean, there was some bad yeah. shit. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, just yeah, cracking eight. That's a- <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the Challenger explosion, but that's uh. Oh yeah, that, that, that that's that's a distant third. That was, okay, that was to, to crack well, it's eight. <laughs> Cracking AIDS was bad, Jesse. All right. Yeah, but that was another thing I remembered where I was. So that's, that's what I had. Was... <laughs> you don't remember where you were when crack hit the streets? <laughs> no, you don't I don't remember. remember where I was. I didn't go to a school that it was as bad as the one you talk about on stage. That uh, <laughs> uh, a, a drug deal goes sideways outside yeah. the classroom window. Yep. I didn't have to same deal time, with that. same time as morning prayer. Never forget it. Yeah, my school wasn't quite like that. We had, you know, we were that was a big thing for us. I was like, oh man, the challenger blew up and the whole school was we we would have been we would have been numb to that. We saw people get shot in front of our school. <laughs> Give a damn about a spaceship blowing up. <laughs> so people getting shot. Uh, Shit oh, was real. Oh man, that's But the <laughs> the eighties was awesome, man. <laughs> Except for cracking age. Except for cracking age, man. You got you gotta put that in there. It's a little footnote. Except for cracking age. The the eighties was the shit. The only two things that hung around from the eighties. Really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Age more so than crack. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, 
there, there's not a lot of efforts to get rid of a lot as much of the stuff from the eighties. I mean, I think what even Reagan's gone. Yeah, so, Reagan's gone. Yeah, Reagan's gone yeah. too. So there ain't much left from the eighties. <laughs> right. So Jimmy Carter's still here somehow. That's <laughs> the, wow. Yeah, he is. Jeez. Yeah. Damn. He's like what 110 at least by now. Gotta be pushing 100. It has <laughs> to be. Yeah, oh, man. I need. I need people who watch my videos more to be commenting on this shit below. So, uh, so when I go back and watch them later, I can, I can get filled in so I don't have to do all the homework myself later. Oh, man. Oh, man. But anyway, speaking of timelines, before this all started, I gave right. you the 11th circle test, which I give all of uh, all of my guests. And uh, so I'm going to bring this up for everybody here to see. And um, so everybody here can see what's going on. So you started it in the top right corner. Uh, so for if it is a little too small for anybody who's not in high def, I'm gonna. So th this is a this is a pretty good timeline. Most of the stuff that it looked like we were we were getting to talk about um, yeah. today. So you you started with the comedy cabaret debut, uh, which was 2014. Right. So like to the day, so February 9th. February yep, 9th, there Yeah. We go. So I got that one. Now the South Jersey stand up champion. So this is this is actually pretty good. Now. The uh, one I don't know in the bottom right. So w w explain this one to me. I think that's one of the only things we haven't covered so far yet. Uh, here. In the, right here? It, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was the um, Dead Wrong Comedy special that I was talking about at the Hideaway oh, okay. in, uh, in Atlantic City. Okay. Where we uh, filmed two shows and had a packed house both nights and had an encore show a week later. Nice. I think that was the yeah. high point of my comedy career so far. Yeah, and a lot, and the rest of this is the NBA panel, which which we talked about, which was 2017, eight, 2018, which is now you got your your album recording and release right which is coming up. And, yeah, uh, you've got uh, the book release, which is going to be in 2019, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, the the second book, second book, book, second right, book. Yeah, the book release, yeah. So, so um, as far as 2020, now I know you leave question marks for for the next five up there. Yeah. So. Even though you're, it's kind of question marks right now, which which is fair. I mean, what what would you like by there? If you have if you have your way, what would you like? I mean, well, we'd all like uh, like ten million bucks, but yeah, let's that'd be, be fair. That'd like, be that'd be sweet. Yeah. But uh, yeah, um, uh, residency at the comedy cellar. Nice. Uh, residency at the comedy store uh, out there in uh, L.A. and um work in those scenes because those are two legendary venues. That's where the legends go yeah. to become legends. So yeah, those two venues, I, I want to perform on those stages. Uh, um, getting, a, getting a screenplay, getting paid for a screenplay, okay. like somebody really buying my screenplay and then, you know, turning it into what they wanted to turn to and it, seeing it on screen and stuff like that. Uh, I want the NBA panel to be on television, and I think we're real close to getting that done. Nice. Uh, the work ethic of John Weatherspoon is unmatched. He works harder than I do, hmm. and I work hard. Mm -hmm. Not to toot my own horn. No, but it's good to have a crew like that. Yeah, it and man, I've been searching so long for that because um I've had I had teams where, you know, I was the front guy and I'm the front guy, I'm the talent, but I'm also the hardest working behind the scenes. And that can't happen. Yeah. I can't be the talent and the hard working guy behind the scenes. So when John came to me with this idea, John was like don't worry about anything. I know what you've been going through as far as, you know, your struggles with trying to get the right team together and stuff like that. Don't worry about anything. You just be an on-air personality, yeah. and I'll handle the rest. And when he said that, man, I was so refreshing. Yeah. And um, when he tells me I'm going to get this on TV, I believe him because everything else that he's told me he's going to do, he's done it. So um, I think in the next two or three years, we're going to have NBA panel on television. Nice. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I I definitely am. <laughs> getting yeah, to see, getting to see you out there on you know on a you know national level would be great. Yeah, that's that. It's 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 dope. Um, and I just I want to I want to meet these deadlines with these with the publishing company and these books. 
I'm supposed to come out with a book every year, and I want to I want to honor that commitment. Nice. So well, it's it is good to see somebody who's got the work ethic, and I know you know being around the comedy scene, I'm sure you've seen it. Who you you see guys that might be good, and they could be good, but they just oh uh, yeah yeah they they just don't want it. They don't have the drive or. You know, anybody can be funny. You know, a lot of people are funny. You know, we can sit here and tell a couple laughs. But mm-hmm. if somebody doesn't have that drive to take it to the next level and make it there, and it's a shame to see it's something It's so wasted. frustrating to yeah. see that. So the only thing I could do is just be an example yeah. and show them what talent and hard work can do. That's that's a much better that's way. That's all I can be because no, you can talk to you blue in the face, but if they don't want it, they just don't want it. I'm going to show you this that can happen. A lot of people need that. They need to see it work for somebody else, and then they can say, oh, I, I, I can do it now. Yeah. Your case is much better because it is nicer to see you push and, and work hard for it and get there as opposed to somebody who may have just, I guess if you want to say, like hit the lottery. Yeah. As far as like, oh, they got picked up by this one big thing. And yeah. They loved their one particular episode. Right. And, or, or something like that. And all of a sudden they're, they're done. They're super like that. And and that almost burns out. Yeah. You know, that's I'd rather it be this way. I like to grind. Yeah. And I, I, I think from what I hear, the guys that work their way up are the ones that, stay hot and stay successful mm-hmm. for, for a lot longer. Kevin Hart is a prime example of that. And a local boy, too. Yep, sure is. And he worked his ass off for 15, 16 years until he got to the top. Now it looks like he got a chokehold in, on the game, and he ain't letting go no. anytime soon. Would you blame him? I don't blame him at all. <laughs> I admire the dude. I admire his work ethic. I read his book front to back, and it's just so inspiring. And um, he t- he's quick to tell you, I'm not the most talented comic, but no one can outwork me. So you got that going for you. You can't be stopped. That's it. Put in the work. Put in the work, Any- man. Yeah. Anything you want to get good at, you got to put the work in. Don't tell me you want to do something and then if you, you really don't want it if you don't work for it. Don't tell me, yeah. oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. Okay, so what have you done to get started in doing that? What? What research have you done? What What are you doing to get towards your goal? Uh, you know what? I'm out of here. I ain't got time to talk to you. You just wasted my time. Yeah, I hear you, man. It's and it's it's fantastic because so many, like we said, people without drive. I think it, it drives us both crazy as people yeah. who like to, you know, focus our energy into stuff. I mean, mine's different than comedy, but you know, we we both like to do that and to see somebody who just thinks they're gonna skate. Nah, it's is killer. Or just wait for some a big break. That that big breaks don't happen, man. You got to go get it. Yeah, got to put the time in, man. And even then, when you do, you might not, but you're doing something you love. Yeah, you know, that see, that's the thing, man. You you get it, you get it. At least you're doing something that you love, yeah. and you're making people laugh. You're making you you you're enjoying yourself. You people are enjoying you. So if that's the peak of it then so be it yeah. but there's other perks and there's other uh there's other things that you can get out of this yeah absolutely so oh man i, I i'm believe me i'm glad we're on the same page with yeah this. man we're <laughs> on the same page with that work, work work i tell people all the time if you ain't if you're not trying to work and we're not trying to motivate me and you don't want me to motivate you and get the fuck from around me i don't have time for that I have time for it. And any negativity and all that, nah, bro. I don't have time for none of that. I hear you. So then I got to ask, because I ask everybody on this one um, as I'm trying to find the, the best wording for this one. Um, so short of, you know, I haven't accomplished everything that I want to. Mm-hmm. If if today was your last day on earth, how would you feel about the life you've led and, wh- and what you've done with, you know, with everything? And, and how would you feel about... Like the relationships that you've built, and you know, and the people and stuff like that. I would be o. I would be okay. I would be mm-hmm. okay with it because you know, no matter what I achieve, the my biggest su- success story will be my girls. Yeah, so they're already here. Like, like that's I can't top that. No matter what I do, if I get a hundred million dollar deal or become a movie star or a legendary stand up comedian, 
my biggest achievement is those two little girls. Yeah. So I I'll be good. I'll be pissed that I'm not rich, but I'll I'll be good. Yeah, and I think we'd all be there really. So it's, right. I, it's I ask this because I wonder, you know, some people, as we just mentioned, kind of just skate through life, and I don't want to be that person who's remembered at the funeral and somebody's up there with a the eulogy going, "He was a great guy." I don't want the, I don't want that. So, yeah, when the when the preacher is struggling to find good things to say about you, yeah, you were a piece of shit. Yeah, I, and I don't <laughs> I don't want that. I don't want to be remembered that way. Right, right, right. I've been to a few of those funerals. Yeah, I, I want to try to, you know, touch the people who've been around me and make I, make a difference. I and, think I've done that. I think I've done that because I, for no particular reason, I'll get messages or, or emails or texts from people that I don't even think are watching me. And they say, "You inspire me, bro." Wow, That's I, awesome. like and, and it, and I inspire them in ways that has nothing to do with stand up comedy. Like I inspire them just to get a job, yeah. or I inspire them to reconcile with their parents, or I inspire hmm. them to stop selling drugs and go the straight route. Oh. So when people tell me that, that's you know, I'm I'm making a difference. Nice. Yeah, that's yeah, and that's, it's, that's and, exactly, and it's through complain. telling my truth, just going on stage and just telling my truth. Man, you had the balls to do that <laughs> in front of strangers, really? Then I got I. There's no excuse for me not mm. to go fill out an application to get a job. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. just crazy what what you do, and and uh, the people you never know the people that are watching you. You never know. Because, you know, not everyone likes everything on Facebook or Instagram and stuff like that. You got people that just lurk and just watch. Yeah, yeah. because if I post one of these videos, it might get a like or two. But there's, you know, 40 other views. That right, are it, And right, it's like, so right. people are, are seeing it and people are hearing the message that's being said. And, and I used to get pissed off by that. I was like, yo, you watched it. Give me your opinion. But... You know, I've come to realize that some you, you're still making a difference no matter what the likes say. Yeah. Uh, as I said, people come to me all the time in person. I, I used to, uh, I'm writing blogs on my um website on com, and I was going through a, a, a very rough time dealing with depression and things mm-hmm. like that. And I wrote a piece on that. And the reaction that I got from people, my mom called me up and she said, Brian, there's so many people that read your blog and said it changed their lives because they were dealing with depression and stuff and they didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to speak on it. They didn't know how to deal with it. And when you wrote about what you were going through, Mm -hmm. it made them realize that they had to change some things in their lives too. And I'm like, Man, all I did was just write that out to just vent and get it done and and over with and just put it out. It was my most viewed blog, my most shared blog. It was nothing funny about it. It was real stuff. And people still come up to me to this day like, man, that blog that you wrote, that changed everything for me. And that's crazy. And then my mom, she she's a, she's a minister and stuff. She's like, see, you're really supposed to be in the pulpit instead of uh-huh. doing comedy. I'm like, uh-huh. see, mom, see, we had a moment, and yeah, then you just, so yeah, you, yeah, so you just you just messed everything up. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to the pulpit, mom. I'm telling my truth on stage. It's, man, it's like. Well, I mean, when you look at it, I guess the church is, you know, preaching is kind of a lot like stand-up comedy. You're yeah. paying to be to watch somebody tell you <laughs> what they believe and everything like that. Well, in church, they force you to pay. They pass around plates and shit. Yeah, put your money in here. Yeah, they get you at the door when you go to a comedy club. Yeah, they get you at the door. Yeah, they do. <laughs> and they two drink minimum, too. There's no. <laughs> That's the other problem I have when I go places. I'm sober, so when I go to some of these comedy nights and it's like two drink minimum, I'm like, who wants a drink? Who wants me to buy him a drink? That's pretty that's much. It. That's pretty much what you're doing. Yeah, that's really what happens because I'm not, you know, I'm not going to be drinking. So, so it, what I ask as far as the the continuance of that question is, if you could go back and live 
relive like one point in time of your life for forever, where would you want to go? Like what time in your life would you say you'd go to? Man, any time where I don't have to pay bills. Mm, I'm noticing that a lot. A lot of people are like, oh, my freshman year of college because I was kind of an adult and I just had my buddies. And yeah. Any good. So I get a lot of that. Yeah. Any time where I don't have any adult worries. <laughs> yeah, that's. It's funny how we want to grow up and be adults so fast, not knowing the perils <laughs> <laughs> that lie ahead for us. What happens when you actually become an adult and then you're like, I want to be a kid again. But that doesn't happen. When when you're a kid and you want to be an adult, hey, here you go, you're an adult now. But when you're an adult you want to be a kid, sorry, can't help you. No, you're not going back. Nah, it's not happening, bro. Well, I guess maybe, well, I don't know. There might be a way to do it if you can figure something out. I mean, maybe the closest, money. The closest thing to childhood uh, while being an adult is being rich. That's what I figured. Getting, yeah. Having a, I think you can do whatever the hell you want. Yeah, just a stupid amount of money, and that's about the only way I figured that, it'd be possible. Yeah, right. That's the only way. Yeah, just stupid money that you don't have to be anywhere, anytime, do whatever you want. And that's, exactly. That's what I'm trying to work towards, man. That's not a bad way to go. I got to start playing the lottery myself. That's about the only chance I, I got. I do that, too. Quiet is kept. And I do that. Well, nothing wrong with it. I mean, I've seen <laughs> some. I, I, I just had Shane Costales on here. And, you know, Shane is back. Uh, the reason we haven't seen him in High Note, he's back working in the casino business again. So he sees the people who put their last dime in the casinos, you know, going and spending $2 to get a lottery ticket. Okay, cool. But these people are like, man, I could use this $50 to keep the heat on. Hmm. Or I can go over and put this money on black. Put it, bet it all on black. And bet the heat on black. God damn. It's, and that's what he sees. And that's a, I mean, that episode's coming out in a few weeks, but it's, you know, that was a lot of our talk about what happened with people like that and seeing the people who go there and they just wow. watch them degrade. And that's, uh, that's going to be for future watching folks. So stay tuned to second week of February for that one. Um, but definitely, you know, you see some of this. That's kind of why I wanted him on because I knew he was in the casino and seeing those kind of people as far as where, you know, like like me and my wife, well, like, okay, we went to AC on New Year's Eve. We took $40, and we went and hung out in the casinos for New Year's Eve. We wandered around. Right. We spent $40 in the casino. They These guys, he sees people who go there and drop $1,000 a hand at, you know, at a, at a card table and walk out of there losing fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 in, in a night without even batting an eye. And... You know, and and then you get the other ones who are just like he he talked about guys that had nothing next to nothing, and they will they'll just come in and try to turn it into something, and you see that different range of people, and it's that's wild. It, it's it's a weird place, man, and it's it's not a place I think I could hang out. But nah, <laughs> nah, I don't think I can hang out there either. It's a dark place, but. Uh, at the end of every podcast here, I always ha- I make an ink blot for every one of my guests to okay. see what they say. It's not a Rorschach test. It's nothing like that. <laughs> so uh, you know, so it's not like a book that's going to say, "Well, if you see this, yeah, we need to get you." Some yeah, help. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not a you know, I'm not a psychoanalyst. I'm not you know, so I can't say anything to anybody. So cool. But what I did was this is the ink blot I have here for <clears throat> for Brian. So I'm this is so you can hang on to see what as the the Guess or the viewers can see exactly what you see. So what, what is it you see in that? Oh man, I see, man. I'm I'm weird, man. No, it see where wherever it goes. That's the middle of it. I see speed racers car. Okay, that's what I see. And I guess the outer portion of it. Um, I see boxing gloves. Oh, okay. Two. Yeah, no, oh yeah. I see it. So, oh, yeah, I see a car in the middle and boxing gloves on the outside. I don't know what the hell that means. Please don't think I'm crazy. <laughs> no, because uh, each person sees something a little bit different in all of these. And it, sometimes it actually ties back in to some of these, and people tend to see what's on their mind. Um. And that's kind of part of it, which is kind of interesting. And uh, but I mean, sometimes it's just shapes. I mean, if 
flip it over if you like. See if you see something that way. Sometimes when you turn it over, it can totally change the way it is. But, uh, you know, everything, everybody sees something a little bit different each time they see it. Some people look at the white space. I I always just see the ink. But. Yeah, I'm going to turn it back over because I turn it that way. I just see a bunch of dicks. Oh, well, let's see. <laughs> that's, that's weird. Uh, <laughs> turn it back over. Maybe I'll turn it upside down. Yeah, like, you're going to flip it. Uh, now I see the goddamn monster from the upside down. What's that I'm not familiar with? Oh, uh, the Stranger Things on Netflix. See, I don't, I've don't. i had this discussion on a couple episodes. I don't actually have That Netflix, looks so. just like the monster from the upside oh, wow. down. Jesus Christ. So now I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to <laughs> definitely look that up and find out now. So Yeah. But yeah, I make all these random. So um, I had a second one uh, that I was going to do and I made it and I was going to bring it out here for Brian but um so I'm going to give it to him to take a look at and he's probably going to look at it and he's going to see why I didn't show him this one and why I didn't take a picture of this one yeah I know why yeah okay yeah it's and I'm telling you this is that's a, that's yeah lady so, parts right there yeah well <laughs> for anybody who doesn't who didn't quite who cuz I didn't take the picture of it um yeah, that's what it is, folks. I mm-hmm. this was just acrylic on paper, and that's what came out. As unsettling as that is, I see the backside of a human being, right on their knees. Yeah, I see knees, feet, and everything. I couldn't see anything else, and I'm like, I can't yep. even give that to him. That something is, fun to do because that's that all doggy style action right there. That's all it. Right. <laughs> I I couldn't have painted it any better, unfortunately, but. <laughs> I was like, no, nah, that's too obvious. I can't give that to oh, him. That's messed up. Because then he's going to be like, that's what you give me? I, I know I'd hear something about it. No, <laughs> no, no, that's all good. I would have I tried to make it work. And then at the end, I was like, you know what? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. That's all. Yeah, it's, oh, man, that's horrible. So I didn't want to make it make it out to be like, like, oh, yeah, I bring Brian on my show. And that's all he sees is the backside of, uh, no, no, I don't want to no, do that to you. No, no, no. But no, man, I wanted to absolutely thank you for for being on here and um i am going to make sure we put any links below so we've got your website brian isley live.com yes um we have i'm going to put links to the show yes which Isley. is coming up in two days as of this airing right so you said it was isley isley dot brown paper tickets dot com all right so i'm gonna have links below for that um like you said you can check out all your videos and stuff on um through your page you can yeah get to at brian isley live.com yep awesome and that should be uh so this will be this is airing on thursday uh so the show will be in two days so get your tickets fill those up there's two shows so get to either one of them because i guarantee you it's going to be an absolute blast watching him for five minutes at a time is incredible so i can't even imagine what how, how long of a set are you doing 45 or in two 20 minute sets two, 20 two minutes set, of- totally different 20 okay. minute sets yeah so 40 minutes worth is going to mm-hmm. be enough yeah, you'll be hobbling, walking. <laughs> <I'm telling you. laughs> oh, man, I appreciate that. So, man. thank you again, sir, for coming. Thank you, on. thank it's you for having me. Pleasure. Thank you. And so, please like and subscribe, guys. Make sure you check him out and check out his website and everything. And like and subscribe below. Check out the links to to the Facebook pages and everything. So, and as always, folks, don't forget your toilet poncho. Thank you. <laughs>